Why do I prefer home consoles over handhelds? All this and more on this episode of Question Lithium. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here. How's it going everyone? I am bringing back Q Lithium or Question Lithium. It's a video series where I answer all of your questions about video games, collecting, or anything like that in general. So if you have any questions, feel free to sound off in the comment section below and I might feature it on a future episode. There are three questions today. The first one's focusing on the title of the video, why I prefer home consoles over handhelds. The second one will be about my favorite handheld console and my favorite home console in my collection. And the third question is about the most sentimental item in my collection. First question though, this is from Dior100 on Instagram, I believe. He asked, why do you focus more on consoles than handhelds? So first of all, it's a little bit of a tricky reason. I think, mainly for me, I really enjoy playing on a handheld system, but I have to think about when am I able to play on handheld consoles. These are all my like console collections for handheld, of course. I do have a video up of my entire handheld collection that I did a video for already. For me, though, I normally would play a handheld system when I was growing up, maybe in the car. Whenever we're doing some sort of a road trip, love those kinds of times. However, I'm someone who suffers from motion sickness. So unless I took like a gravol pill or something like that, I really could not play handheld games in the vehicle. I grew up with a Sega Genesis and a Sega Game Gear. So the Game Gear I would try to bring with me on road trips and eventually I think I had a Game Boy Advance down the line, but I just couldn't play them in car rides. So it was a neat way to bring a system maybe up to the cottage or somewhere where I was traveling, but because of my motion sickness, it really prevented me from enjoying handheld gaming as much as I probably should have. So for that reason, I really wanted to focus on home consoles a little bit more, and that's where my gaming started out. I focused way more on playing Nintendo consoles more at home, because that's where, you know, bigger screens a little bit better for home consoles, in my opinion. Also, in terms of the collecting aspect of trying to get all the home consoles, it has been my goal to try and get every variation, every color variation of Nintendo's consoles. Not every single box variation, just all the different color variations. So there are several for the NES and the Super Nintendo, but then the N64 exploded with all these cool colors and the six fantastic systems down there and the Pikachu editions and everything like that. And then the GameCube has a lot of different variations. The Wii kind of settled down, same with the Wii U and now the Switch. We have a decent amount, which I don't have yet. So my thinking and logic with collecting home consoles has been they're probably going to be more expensive in the long run. If I can get these now while they're still cheap or inexpensive or maybe not cheap, but at least they were a better deal, let's get the big ticket items out of the way. So when I started collecting over 10 years ago, for example, like N64 consoles, I could find a lot of these for $100 to $150 or less boxed and then get them shipped to me for a reasonable rate. Same with the GameCubes. So I was really trying to collect all the systems that would be heavy ticket items that I thought were going to eventually cost me a lot more money and I wanted to get them ahead of the curve if I could. And I think actually that's ended up happening. A lot of these systems are worth way more than $100 now because it's been over 10 years and a lot of people got into collecting and they're just harder to find. Also, shipping costs. I figured the shipping costs of big consoles would be way more expensive than trying to ship a small handheld system. I originally predicted that handheld systems wouldn't go up in value as much as home consoles and I was wrong. A lot of the handheld systems have skyrocketed as well. However, for example, I don't have all the different Game Boy colors. Like there's Kiwi, different colors of the Game Boy basically that I really want to get, Barry and all of those in the box. Those are still worth like $100 or more, but they're nothing like the $1,000 that some of the N64 consoles may go for now. Maybe not a thousand, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but at least over $500. So to pay for shipping for these kinds of handheld systems would only cost me maybe like $15, maybe $20, but to get a boxed system that's a lot heavier and a lot bigger shipped is costing more money. So I really wanted to get those out of the way in terms of collecting for those reasons. And lastly, there are a lot less home consoles to collect for than there are handhelds. There's 16 different color variations for the N64 and then two others with just like a little cover. For the GameCube, there's also like 15 or 16 different ones. 
For the Wii, there's really only five, with the Wii Mini included. For the Wii U, there's only three. But handhelds, once I get into the worldwide variations of handhelds for the Game Boy Color and for the Game Boy Advance and everything like that, there are, it seems like, hundreds. It's just too much to keep track of, and that's why for a while I was only going to focus on North American stuff, but now I do have some Japanese systems. Like, you can see the four Pokemon consoles that look really cool. I have unboxing videos for those as well, if you're interested. So that's the main reasons, I think. Number one... I used to suffer from, I suffer from motion sickness, so it was just hard for me to play in the car and enjoy the handhelds as much. Number two, home consoles, I really enjoy the larger screen when I'm gaming, and most of my gaming takes place at home. Number three, how many of the systems there are, there's a lot less home console variations than there are for handheld variations, so that made collecting them a little bit easier. And I guess number four as well, just the cost of them, I expected the consoles to go up way more over time, which has probably been relatively true. So that's why I focused on home consoles rather than handhelds. Also, the games seem to be a little bit higher quality and a little bit longer when they are with home consoles. So let me just turn on my light system in here with my new cartridge display, by the way. Looks pretty wicked. I love it. So if you look here, obviously I have a pretty decent collection. I've got like 700, maybe 800 games. I'm not getting all of them for every system, just the ones I want to play or the ones that are rare and collectible. But my handhelds is really just those three shelves down there and then all the Pokemon games I have elsewhere. So I don't have as many games handheld collecting either. So to answer your question with handheld collecting in terms of games, the games aren't as long and aren't as thorough on average than home console games. And I would much rather play on a larger screen. Of course, on the GameCube, you can play on a large screen with a Game Boy player, but, and on the Super Nintendo too, you can play on the large screen. The best part of all of this is really the fact that the Nintendo Switch is both handheld and it's on the go. So that kind of combines everything. So I really hope I answered your question. Thanks for asking it, DR100. Our next question is also from Instagram. This is from Nintenbrit. She asks, what is your absolute favorite handheld or console in your entire collection? There are a lot to choose from, and there are some really good, nice consoles that I don't have. Let me know what your favorite console is, by the way. I, first of all, really like all the Zelda variations of the consoles. So you've got like the DS Lite, the 3DS, the 3DS XLs, and the new Nintendo 3DS XL. But my favorite ones right now is probably this new Nintendo XL. This one is the 2DS version. This is the Hyrule Edition. It is spectacular. Again, I have an unboxing video of this. This might be the most beautiful handheld in my collection. I love the emboss. I love the fact that it has the Triforce on it and the Red Bird, of course, Skyward Sword, going back to that. Other than that beautiful console, which is one of my favorites to use for gaming as well, I really like this one down here, which is a Pokemon system. This is a P Game Boy Color, first of all, with the Game Boy Yellow Pack. This system came from my best friend Jordan, so it has some like sentimental value in there as well. I just like the fact that this one has Pikachu on it, Jigglypuff, Togepi, the power button right there. That is so cool that when you turn on the system, by the way, so let me just try and turn this on. Oh, it's got no batteries in it right now, okay. But if you turn on the console, right there, the Pokeball has like the little light on the side. That's such a clever design with this. Has Pokemon logo on it, the different colored buttons, the blue D-pad on the back. It's blue and yellow. Love this design and the box that he found for me. So the fact that I got that from my best friend as a gift and the fact that that's a really cool design system. I really, really like that console overall, but it's so hard to choose. Even like the Spice Orange Game Boy Advance is pretty cool, but special editions. Oh, and the Metroid one down here. I really like the Metroid one and the, I guess, hexagon. Like, it almost looks like a honeycomb design on this system. I have a plastic case on it just to keep it really good. However, let's just take a look at this for a second because this one is so beautiful and I really like the color orange too because I'm half Dutch. The other side is yellow, but the worst part about this system is you open it up and it's like plain black on the inside and everything. I wish it had more color design on the inside which knocks it down a few points. Those are probably my three favorite handhelds. The Hylian Shield Edition for the Nintendo 2DS XL, the Metroid console for the Nintendo 3DS XL, and then the Pokemon edition of Game Boy Color that comes with the Game Boy game for Game Boy Yellow. Game Boy Yellow for Pokemon Yellow. Those are my top three systems probably for handheld. 
In terms of home consoles, really hard to choose. So hard to choose my different variation favorites, but for the Nintendo 64, it almost always comes back to this console right here. This is the Japanese exclusive Dai Hawks. It's spelled weird. It's really hard to pronounce, so I'm not even sure if I'm saying it correctly. This is a brighter orange than the fire orange for the Nintendo 64. The console usually does have some whitening over time, and the back of the system and the back of the controller, let me show you the controller for this without trying to drop everything down. It is a see-through, extremely dark black that's different than the smoke black, but you can see that it's a little bit see-through. The fact that this is just a rarer system, it's also one of my favorite colors, like I mentioned, orange. Aranya Bova is a way of saying uh, orange forever, or orange on top, basically, I think, in Dutch that my mom taught me, Aranya Bova. So I really like this system, the fact that it's rare. I think the Jusco right here is a rarer console. I just really like it. It reminds me of Halloween, too, which was always a good time. And Halloween's coming up in a month and a half. We'll see what happens around that this year, but really, really like the system. There's also a Game Boy Color right here that matches the console. I don't have the box for this yet, but I found it, and it's really hard to tell that the back is see-through, but you can kind of see the batteries right through there. So it's cool that there's some systems that match. There's also an extreme green. So like this extreme green controller, there is an extreme green console that I would love to get that I don't have yet, by the way, but that would be really cool if I can find that one at some point. So that's in my top three, the Die Hawks. Love that one. Like, all the Fantastics are hard not to put in this collection, too, because they're so nostalgic. But honestly, this Pikachu edition is such a cool system. This Pikachu console is a different footprint, so it's not the same shape as the other N64s. And it has a power button that's a Pokeball. Pikachu's cheeks light up. It's two-tone, so it's got yellow, just like the other system that I showed you for the handheld. So I really like this system as well. That's probably in my top three right now. And then, from the Nintendo GameCube, it's so hard to choose, but from all the GameCube systems, I really, really like this Char... It's called Char's Customized Box. So this one has its own system designed for it, and it also has a Wave Bird that's designed for it. So this one's a really unique console that's very, very difficult to track down. It's quite expensive right now. And the WaveBird controller that I mentioned is up here. The box for it I do have as well. So I'm really happy to have that set. That whole set together is pretty cool. This controller is one of 1,000. Really hard to find in the box. It doesn't exist that much anymore because I think it was available maybe through Club Nintendo or some sort of promotion, and really, really neat system. But the console that might trump that as the other system in my top three, once I get it, which should hopefully be pretty soon, is the Tales of Symphonia, like symphonic green console down here. This box is empty, but I have found one locally, so that is happening hopefully soon that I make that deal and I buy the system locally. I don't think it comes with the controller. So hey, I'm asking for your help, by the way, guys, and ladies. If anyone has a Tales of Symphonia green controller, I'm after one of those, so I really need help trying to get that, but that would probably maybe bump out the other one, the Char's Customized Box. So those are probably my top three. Other notable, notable or honorable mentions, I would say, is I really just love the packaging style for this Mario's 25th anniversary, and it's Mario's 35th anniversary coming up, so that's kind of neat that that's coming up and we get the Super Mario All-Stars, which I'm really excited to play. The system's not amazing, it's just red. It's just the fact that I got this set that I really enjoyed. And the other shout out I would need to give is for the Wii U system. I love just the gamepad for this Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, because Wind Waker is one of my favorite games of all time. So just the gamepad's different. It's just a black Wii U system, but the beautiful gamepad for this is pretty wicked. So it's a cool special edition, and I expect that to go way up in value over time. So those are some of my honorable mentions for my favorite systems. Thank you so much for your question. I really appreciate it. So we've got one more question to go. Thanks, Nintendrit. Great question. For our final question today, it comes from YouTube from Lady Nikki. She asks, my question is what Nintendo item is the most sentimental to you? So I'm going to talk about my most sentimental games. I think uh, two or three in particular, and then I'm going to talk about my most sentimental console to me. So the most sentimental game for me 
There's three of them, and they're all for the Nintendo 64, but one of the number one games for me, sentimental-wise, is Star Fox 64. One of my friends, uh, shout out to Connor and his family, he had a system and a TV somehow in his bedroom when we were really, really young. It was a small screen, it was like 13 inch, but I remember playing Star Fox in his bedroom. It was the original Super Nintendo game, and then eventually I played Star Fox 64, and I was completely blown away by this game, the replayability and how fun it was. So I actually bought a copy of Star Fox 64 before I had a Nintendo 64 system. So that's a little bit insane that that happened, that I bought the game before the system. The other two games that are extremely nostalgic for me on that system are Super Mario 64, of course. So Super Mario 64, can't wait to play that. That's happening so soon on the Nintendo Switch, just turning on my light here. So I also got a copy of Super Mario 64 before I got a Nintendo 64. The reason why is because I played this game a lot at my cousin's house. He is probably my inspiration, uh, my cousin Kyle. He's probably my inspiration of why I got into Nintendo so much, along with my best friend growing up named Rob. They had Nintendo consoles, um, I had Sega, and Super Mario 64 was amazing. It was one of my first Nintendo gaming experiences, other than Super Mario Bros. 3. I remember playing at Rob's house, but seriously, Super Mario 64, got it before I had the system, and then bought the system maybe a week or two later. And the last really sentimental game for me is Paper Mario on the Nintendo 64. It is the reason why I still like the Paper Mario series, even though it strayed for a little bit, but Origami King brought it back. And Origami King's a pretty good game. You should definitely check it out if you haven't yet. But this game right here was so much of my childhood. There was a time when my sister and I got incredibly sick. We were home for a week, and we were not well. So during that time, I played through Paper Mario again. It was not my first playthrough. I think it was my second. And my sister and I had to stay home. And she watched me and like cheered me on the entire game. She played the Peach levels because after each chapter, you play a little bit as Princess Peach. And I played through the main part of the game. And it was such a cool experience. It's just so sentimental to me. What's your sentimental games from your childhood? Because it's really hard for me to not mention GameCube games and other games like Double Dash or Super Mario Sunshine. Those are really nostalgic for me as well. And all the Pokemon games for my wife. I'm sure she would say those are nostalgic, of course. The other nostalgic thing for me in terms of consoles, to bring it back to home consoles and handhelds, the Nintendo 64. So, like, this console right here is the one that I bought two weeks after, one or two weeks after getting Star Fox 64 and Super Mario 64. Finding this system used for a really good deal at a used game shop and I kept trying to find one. At the time I could not afford to buy a new system because I really wanted this Donkey Kong 64 set and I tried saving up enough money for it but it was just way too expensive. So finding this used copy of the console, so nostalgic, that was like my first Nintendo pickup other than the two games, Star Fox and Mario 64. So that is my most sentimental item probably in my collection in terms of consoles. And the other sentimental item in my collection, I've mentioned this before, but this is like one of my favorite items. The Millennium 2000 controller. It's one of 1,000. I don't know why they didn't make 2,000 of these. That would have been perfect. But this was available as a giveaway in a contest in Nintendo Power. It was really, really hard to track down and find. I had two of these in my collection years ago, and since then I traded one away. This is one of the most expensive controllers in my collection. It never came with a box. It has a different housing for the joystick. It has a black housing for the joystick right around here. All the buttons are black rather than colored. It's two-toned. It's black on the back. It's silver on the front. So cool in terms of collecting. That's probably my most nostalgic collecting piece. But what are your really nostalgic items or games in your collection? Because... I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Thank you so much for your question, Lady Nikki, and thanks to the three of you for asking questions. Keep asking me questions. I would love to bring back this series on a more constant basis. Let me know if you appreciated it. Like the video if you could fill that like bucket below, and I hope to bring you more videos. Sorry, this one is one day delayed. I normally post videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. Stay awesome, everyone, and stay safe. Thank you so much.